What is going on guys? It's the Mad Dragon back with some exciting Destroy All Humans news. Now Destroy All Humans 2 Reprobed has now become available for pre-order and they've just dropped the new trailer which will be playing in the background for you guys. This is of course the second remaster of the Destroy All Humans series done by THQ Nordic. For those of you who've watched the channel for long enough you'll know that I did a full playthrough of the first Destroy All Humans game after it was remastered and I loved every second of it. Out of the entire Destroy All Human series, Destroy All Humans 2 is absolutely my favourite, so knowing this remaster is coming is absolutely brilliant. I can't wait to jump back into the grooving hippie age, fighting some ninja samurai warriors, heading to the moon to take on the Blisk, messing around with my favourite gun, the Disc Locator, once again, and of course being reunited with Crypto's partner, Natalia. If you know, you know. But not just have THQ dropped the new trailer, we've now got a bunch of news about the additions that are going to be coming out for the game, and I thought it'd be a lot of fun to check it out today. So starting out, I'm checking the game out on the Xbox Marketplace, but I'm sure you can find it on other places if that's not your platform of choice. First point of interest for me is that there's three different editions of this game now available for pre-order. The first one is, of course, the standard edition of Destroy All Humans 2 Reprobed, priced at $34.99. The second is a jumbo pack containing both the first and second Destroy All Humans remastered games at one price of $64.99. And with that, it looks like you get the skin pack for both games and a little bit of extra DLC, which is nice. And the third and final version is the Dressed to Skill edition, priced at $44.99, which is not terribly priced considering prices of games nowadays. This is also by far the biggest edition that's been mentioned so far, consisting of the standard game and all of the DLC to go with it. I have had a look online, but at the minute there's no mention of a collector's edition like the Crypto 137 edition that we got for the first game, which I actually picked up just the other month, and I filmed myself doing an unboxing of it to Today, which is some pretty impeccable timing that will be coming out on the channel pretty soon. So in terms of the DLC then, what are you guys going to be getting for your money? So included in the Dressed to Skill edition, we've got three extra bits of DLC to check out. The first one is called Clone Carnage, and by all accounts seems to bring you the ability to play the game in split screen with your friends, which is awesome! Bringing split screen back gives me some early 2000s vibes, and not enough games have it anymore. Comprising of four modes, six maps, and up to four player local multiplayer, it allows you to play with friends and do some challenges such as Rampage, Armageddon, Race, and abduction game modes. We saw all of these modes in the first remaster and it doesn't say anywhere that about the ability to play the campaign in co-op, which is a bit of a shame, but hopefully if it is just these challenges, they will have created some entirely new environments to at least be able to play in in split screen. It does also mention that this pack includes all of the skins from the first Destroy All Humans remaster, which I've done some videos on in the past, so make sure to check them out if you want to see a bit more about those skins and what have you. The next DLC is probably by far the most exciting one for me. This is the reprobed skin pack that's going to be coming out, bringing 10 special skins for Crypto, but also four skins for the Saucer that you get around to fly, and I can't wait to see some of those. I love the skins in the first game, and I am super excited to see the new skins in this game. But I think this is actually the first time we've ever been brought skins for the Saucer itself, which will be awesome to play around with. We do have some images and the list of names for the skins. I'm not 100% sure which one is which, but I'll try my best to put them on screens for you guys along with the names. So starting off, we've got My Name Cryptos, or Cryptars, I'm not really sure, uh, which seems to be uh, some sort of like sea monster mixed with Groot from the Avengers. Is probably the only way I'm going to be able to describe it, but it looks pretty cool. We've got Licensed to probe, which is of course going to be uh, a bit of a James Bond reference. We've got Crypto here in his white suit looking all uh, cool down in like a London vibe. We've got like that. We've also got Licensed 
to probe, which is, <laughs> I thought originally was a bit of a Sean Connery joke, but I think it's meant to be uh, just that he's basically a different James Bond. Looks like he's playing in a uh, slightly different area. I'm not sure what the background is, but there's some dude in like a little gas mask in the background there. Not sure what's going on there. We've got Killer Crynod. Uh, which is basically uh, a naked crypto with like an afro. Not really sure what's going on there. I'm sure that's a reference to something, but whoosh, gone straight over my head. We've got Murder Hornet, which is pretty much exactly what it says. You look like a bit of a hornet dressed in all yellow, look like some sort of big bug going on the go, which I'm a big fan of playing Grounded, if you've uh, seen that on the channel, so you'll know I'm probably up for playing in that one a little bit. Mr. Sparklebutt, the, uh, basically a unicorn. Is that the only way I can describe this one? I can't think of which one would be Mr. Sparklebutt if not the unicorn one. I'm, I have no doubt a bunch of people are going to want to play with that one because, come on, who doesn't love a deadly alien going around playing in a unicorn suit? We've got Monkey Brain, which seems to be uh, crypto in like a Planet of the Apes outfit is the only way I can describe it. He's dressed as sort of a, uh, a monkey of some form. Monkey Brain feels that it fits that one pretty well. Not to be confused with Brains, the one that we've also got coming up here, also with the word Brain in there. Uh, seems to be a bit more of a zombie look. The undead crypto coming back to uh, probe some brains out of people, no doubt. We've then got Far Out Man. That is the hippie crypto that is going to be in here. That'll be a lot of fun, especially if they actually allowed to do stuff with where you take over people uh, by their visual look on the uh, the hollow pox and what have you so that people can't distinguish you and the police let you go if they actually allowed you to walk around in this skin and maybe sort of blend in a little bit that'd be a pretty cool uh, addition to have is that skin and then finally we have crypto 3000 which pff, i don't even know what's going on here this looks like darth vader Kind of mixed with Phoenix person from Rick and Morty, <laughs> if everyone knows what I'm on about there. Uh, it's probably the only way I can describe it, but you know what? There's a bunch of cool skins, and I cannot wait to uh, to check them out. And then as for the source of skins, unfortunately, we don't have any images yet, which is a real shame. I really want to see what they look like. But we do have the list of names. We have Petal to the Metal, Voyager 500K, Vintage Saucer, and Utsuru Bun. I'm not sure what's going on there, uh, but we'll hopefully get to see a little bit more of them in the future. And then the final DLC is the Challenge Accepted DLC, which for all intents and purposes just seems to be adding the challenge modes from the original game into this game, which you basically get with the split screen pack. Uh, but now you have the ability to add mutators to the game to switch up the challenge bit. I'm not sure why this is classed as a DLC. It feels like a natural continuation from the first game uh, and would seem a bit strange to not just be included in the standard game, uh, but hopefully this won't be a sort of paywall deal to stop players picking up the standard version of the game from being able to play in the challenges. Um, but this one falls a slightly more flat for me. I'd really have to see what the mutators bring in order to know whether this is going to be worth any money. For anyone who did play the Wii version of uh, Destroy All Humans, um, on that you could actually mutate the world to play as all the humans were actually zombies and stuff. That was a lot of fun. I spent a lot of time playing that, so hopefully they mean something like that when they talk about the mutators. But there we have it, guys. That is going to be all the news for today. Let me know what you think of the new game coming out in August. Are you excited? What do you think of the new skins? Let me know down in the comments. And if you have enjoyed this Destroy All Humans news video, make sure to drop this video a like because it does really help the channel out. And subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with all of the videos around the Destroy All Humans news and the game when it eventually comes out. I hope you've all enjoyed today, guys, and I will see you all next time, fellow. Furons. Bye bye.